guys, welcome to Lector TV. Uh, I'm Jaime once again. Uh, I'm here in Embedded World in a microchip stand in Nuremberg, uh, Germany. Um, I hear, I'm here with uh, Alain. Alain uh, is uh, going to tell us uh, what's going on in MPLAB X because I see a few changes, few updates. That's right. And, yes. And yeah, I came, I came directly to him because I saw updates in your in your website. So now I hand the show to you, and it would be great if you can introduce me. What's what's new? Okay. Thank so, you very much. Yeah. So uh, actually, my job is to to train yeah. customers. Okay. Since mm -hmm. eight years, I'm doing training. Yeah. And uh, MPLABX actually has been introduced. Uh, Four years ago, yeah. and the reason for that is that our previous platform was like you know ten years old, yeah. and we had expanded uh, processors, and we needed you know an up-to-date uh, platform. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we decided, we looked around and found you know if we would start from scratch it would take a lot of time. Yeah. We decided to use NetBeans. Mm -hmm. Why NetBeans? Because it's a Java platform. Mm -hmm. It has a powerful uh, editor, and it is based on Java. Mm -hmm. The meaning of Java is, as you know, it is easily portable across yeah, and in fact... Multi-platform Absolutely. Approach. So yeah. MPLABX actually on top of uh, NetBeans, which is itself running on top of Java, yeah. has enabled us to offer to customers multi-platform, that means Windows, Linux and Mac. Yeah. That means natively customers using MPLABX can choose on which uh, platform they want to develop. Huh. Yeah. So. Uh -huh. As you see uh, mm -hmm. on this, uh, MPLABX is the IDE, and then you have to add compilers. So yeah. we have a compiler for 8-bit, yeah. we have a one for 16 and one for 32-bit. Uh -huh. And then we have tools, yeah. three, three categories of tools, PICKIT3, ICD3, and Realize, depending yeah. on the budget and the kind of processor. Yeah. But what is unique is there is a single platform. Customers can go from the very tiny products, you know, six pins, we have yeah. really tiny products, up to the very large uh, devices like PIC 32 mz which have 2 megabytes of flash and 512k of RAM. Mm -hmm. So that means customers don't need to learn a new development environment. Yeah, On yeah. our tools, they, they, they are able to handle all the PICs. Okay. We cannot ah. update them yeah. because there is some uh, firmware. So MPLABX new version will automatically update tools to take care of the new products. Yeah. Ah, so, so for me to know, just uh, MPLABX supports your entire range Absolutely, of, of you're uh, right. peaks, in fact, right? it's, we are talking about more than 1200 products yeah, you know, yeah, well. microchip it continues to develop 8 bit 16 and 32 bit yeah. so that's very important yeah, yeah. Huh. nice and and yeah i, I saw a thing uh, in your website uh, like a tool to configure uh, tell me tell me more i mean okay so in fact as you as you know, you know the microcontrollers they have more and more memory. Yeah. But the customers, you know, the development time doesn't doesn't change. Yeah. And yeah that's yeah. that's. Uh, uh, time a is the same. Uh, difficulty is always racing. Yes. So oh, it's yeah. a challenge. So how yeah. can we actually accelerate, you know, the development time so to make it yeah. easier? Obviously, uh, to do that, you need some tools which are uh, graphical tools. Yeah. And one of these tools is called MCC. So as you can see on the screen, rather than to dig deeply into the documentation, uh -huh. the customers will now be able, once they have selected a device, to see it, uh, to see the pinout. And actually, we are packing more and more function inside, and the customer will actually decide on which pins, you know, each of the internal blocks will be connected. Mm -hmm. Once he has done this choice through this uh, pin, uh, pin manager, he will be able, one by one, to configure the various ah, peripherals yeah. by choosing them one by one and then he has access to all the features and the details through a graphical interface. Yeah. So, so to say you can choose uh, the resources you want to make available to the external world. Yes. So the, the, chi the peak can interface. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. The, the list of uh, features which appear are, are uh, dedicated to each peak. So we only show of course for that device yeah. what exists inside. Yeah, 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 right. So you go through this you configure the peripherals one by one, uh -huh. uh, they go to the top, and once you are finished with this, we will actually generate uh, a software project yeah. which, co which contains uh, files, which makes all the initialization yeah, of, the, right. of the device. So you can, for yeah, you can forget about like, the pre-configuration, exactly. the, the initialization. Of, Especially yeah. for newcomers you know, yeah. who don't know our architecture, they don't have to dig deeply. Yeah. At that time, the customer, of course, needs to develop his application. Yeah. But the configuration 
is much easier using this tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. much so more this, intuitive. Actually, this of course. tool uh, is uh, available for our latest 8 bit and 16 bit because, as I said, we have you know 1200 products, yeah. so we don't cover you know the 10 or 20 years old uh, devices which yeah. we still ship. <laughs> but uh, um, so we have decided you know to cover all the new picks which are coming in the 8 and 16 bit family. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we will be using the chip configurator uh, for 8 bit and 16 bit. That is and right. what's what's happening with the 32? How about 32? Yeah. So <laughs> the requirement actually for uh, uh, 32 bit are a yeah. little bit higher. Uh -huh. So we decided to have a new platform called Harmony. Uh -huh. And you know, in uh, in Harmony, the difference between 8 and 16 bit is that you will have a lot of protocol stacks, uh -huh. middleware like USB stack, TCP yeah. IP, mm -hmm. file system, maybe a real-time OS. Mm -hmm. And because the software which is developed is very large, generally, we want to have hardware abstraction. Companies, you know, who develop software, when they migrate to a new uh, device, they spend a lot of time to yeah. reconfigure everything. Mm -hmm. By having hardware abstraction, the customer will develop software and will not need to know anything about you know the details yeah. about the chip uh -huh. and it will select the stacks on the drivers yeah. and it will make it easier easy for him to mm -hmm. actually migrate from one device to another yeah, yeah, yeah so i mean if the drivers exist he could migrate from one device to another within a day yeah, yeah well so Small you can basically ignore what's going on low level and you're just Absolutely. thinking about yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. so the point is most of the costs mm -hmm. you know for the smaller and medium companies yeah. is spent in software development yeah, because yeah. they have low volume so where they really spend money is the software development mm -hmm. and harmony is exactly addressing this point mm -hmm. that means by doing hardware abstraction it it enables customers to develop a family of product mm -hmm. where they can migrate within the family within a short time which would yeah. necessary uh, in the past uh, probably, uh, you know, it would need a, a few weeks or maybe months. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. So Harmony has addressed uh, uh, mm -hmm. exactly uh, projects where you have a large uh, piece of software mm -hmm. and enable uh, an easy yeah. migration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, 32, I mean, available on 32 bits, mainly because, of course, you... you yeah, the software generated, as yeah. you understand, I'm yeah. talking about TCP, IP stack, USB. Uh, we have devices up to 2 megabytes, so very fast here, you know, you reach 64 or more. So those memories are generally available, you know, yeah. in 32-bit uh, devices yeah. and not so much on the uh, tiny 8-bit uh, or 16 Yeah, 8 or 16, yeah. 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 That's and the you also need the performance, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. So with this, uh, with this kind of, uh, um, of platform, yeah. so we are now able to offer to customer the possibility so as I'm doing uh, now, to uh, to select so a project, and I am I have to tell uh, the, this tool using a, a specialized plugin. So I, as you see, we have a plugin for the 816-bit ah, okay. and one yeah. for Harmony. Okay, so now I yeah. start the plugin, and it will actually uh, launch a graphical tool, uh -huh. which will enable me to actually select this very high level. Uh, middleware mm -hmm. and you see you have online documentation ah, here. Ah, okay, in the same window, yeah, that's cool. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, as you see here, you have very high level, nothing to see with the low level registers. Yeah, We yeah, are yeah. talking about protocols. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can decide, yeah. for example, a USB stack. USB. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm just doing this and now I can choose the details of the USB. Uh -huh. ah. I do this one by one and once I have uh, finished uh, to do that, yeah. I can configure the clock uh -huh. so all this you know also is normally done by hand but here you can select the value of the crystal yeah and you can select also the target frequency you want to run at ah okay, okay? yeah and therefore this tool will calculate for you the bits and pieces with this auto calculate i can tell the target frequency yeah, my, yeah, eight, i don't need to know the detail it will yeah. do it for me yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, what you want to do, of course, also is to configure the pins. Yeah, of course, yeah. So the pin diagram will let you uh, connect again the peripherals with the pins. Mm -hmm. And once you have done these uh, three steps, you can just generate your project. So save it, yeah. And generate. Uh huh. So what happens now? It will generate a project which includes 
all the uh, middleware. Mm -hmm. As you can see here, you may have already been writing some software and obviously you don't want to lose all what you have what you did. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. this tool mm -hmm. enable you to merge and selectively keep. That means you can at any time come back into this tool and add new features without uh, to restart from scratch. Mm -hmm. The same is true if, you, if we release a new version of uh, Harmony, you will be able to migrate it even in the middle of your project without to lose all what you've yeah. been doing. Yeah, so you don't need to uh, get your project finished to no. migrate it. You can so just do it on the way. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. this yeah. migration is a key point because very often this configuration tool, you can use them at the beginning of the project, but mm -hmm. once you start to add software, you can't use them anymore. Ah. The key difference here is really that at any time you can go back to this and add feature, remove feature as you need, or migrate a new version, as I said, of uh, Harmony, which would add new feature and yeah. which you won't take advantage of. Uh -huh. And just very, very last question, I, th I promise. Uh, I see that you can uh, basically uh, install add-ons or plugins. Like, uh, plugins, exactly. And uh, you mentioned it uh, works internally in Java. Yes. Uh, how you guys feel about people developing their own add-ons, plugins? Actually, we want people to do that. Okay. You know, we used to have a closed platform. Uh -huh. Now we are using, uh, you know, this uh, open source so NetBeans uh, platform, which where we built uh, this on, so MPLabx on top of uh, NetBeans. Mm -hmm. And as you have seen here, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah? Uh -huh. So you can see these are plugins. Yeah. We encourage customers actually to develop their own plugins. We have a developer's kit which is free of charge. Yeah. And we encourage customers to tailor MPLabex to their needs. Mm -hmm. Maybe they need, they need to do some automated tests or mm -hmm. some, you know. So you can really uh, take advantage of this uh, platform by developing your, your own uh, uh, plugins. Mm -hmm. And this SDK is actually free of charge. Yeah, this yeah. is the SDK which is used also for NetBeans. Uh -huh. so, the, the, the key point, you know, about uh, MPLabex is uh, user friendliness and a parser. So MPLabex integrates already something which checks in real time mm -hmm. the software. So before you actually compile, yeah. the customer will notice if there are some errors in his source code. Oh. And uh, we encourage companies and even some companies may want to sell it. So we have a business model where we can actually yeah. distribute plugins, you know, commercial plugins, yeah. little bit like, you know, a store, an app store, mm -hmm. where companies can also uh, sell, uh, you Develop, know, some plugins. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah? So uh -huh. they can be free plugins or uh, sellable plugins. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool, yeah. Very nice. Hey, I think that was pretty much it. Thank you. Yes, Thanks a lot. Thank you yeah. very much. It was nice. Yeah, it was really nice. So, so yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like it, please uh, click like and subscribe, of course. And that was all. So thank you and see you next time. Bye bye.